All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Peter Draws, once again for another sketchbook tour. That's right. I finished another sketchbook, uh, and we're going to do a tour of it. As you can see, it's completely... It's hard to flip through it like this, but it's completely full. And I'm going to flip through it page by page, and we're going to look at it, and it's going to be great. Um, a little preview, I mean, a little thing here. Here's the previous sketchbook I did. So this is like really the only second really full sketchbook, you know, every side of every page I've completed. If you want to see, uh, here's my first one. If you want to see me flip through this one, uh, there's a video of it you can watch. The, so these are both, I'll discuss the materials also. A lot of people seem to care about those. These look a lot different, but they're really both on the same type of paper. Because I realized I like this kind of paper. Here's my old one because... Um, it doesn't bleed through at all. So if you look at maybe, for example, like this one, where I used a lot of ink, a lot of markers, um, or this one, for example. Look, I just poured the ink onto this page pretty much, and it didn't show through at all, right? That's the beauty of this Crescent Render paper. No show-through paper. They have it designed um, for, for things like, uh, as you can see, use with all media. So there are some downsides to the paper, like um, it feathers a little bit more in some papers and stuff like that. Uh, but I like it because it doesn't show through, it doesn't bleed through or anything like that, right? So I learned my lesson with this sketchbook that I liked it and I wanted to keep using this paper. But what I didn't like about it was that it, it doesn't lie completely flat. So when I want to do like two page drawings and stuff like that, it's hard to get the, the scanner to get the stuff right here in the middle, right? So I learned how to... I learned how to, I mean, I watched a YouTube video. Sorry, this intro is so long. And I learned how to do, you know, do some basic book binding, which let me make a sketchbook like this, which as you can see is a lot, lies a lot flatter. It's very basic stitching. I didn't do anything fancy. I think I looked up, uh, I think her name is C Lemon on YouTube. You might know about her. I just Googled, I just typed in on how to bind a sketchbook or how to make a sketchbook, right? And uh, I just bought a pad of this Crescent Render paper, which you can buy. And then it usually comes with a, uh, a cardboard piece of backing, which I cut in half. And um, that's why I use as the front and back. All right. I think I've explained everything now. All right. So let's, let's look at it. Also, they, also they, do look, they, they make bigger ones, too, like, like this. This is also a Crescent Render notebook, which I'm which I haven't worked in in a while, but there is stuff in here. I need to go back to it sometime. But this has the same problem in that it doesn't lay flat in the middle like I really want. But I should still go back to this. All right, let's look, let's look at the sketchbook. All right, I think this is a good angle. Let's just open it up and get started. Here's the first thing I drew in this sketchbook. I went through it pretty much chronologically. I didn't skip pages or anything. And I think I posted this first drawing according to Instagram on March 7th. 2016 so how long has that been I took some breaks from it like I didn't draw in this thing every day so but that just gives you an idea of how long pretty much in this sketchbook I mostly always used various rotring isograph pens which um, are technical pens they're pretty expensive but they they, they pretty much last forever also so that's those are the pens I use here Okay. Sometimes larger pens, sometimes finer pens, but I think, uh, actually earlier on in this sketchbook, I might still have been using some felt tipped pens. These actually look, this looks like lines made by felt tip pens. I don't know if my eyes trained or untrained, but that's the idea I'm getting. Here's a, I do a lot of self portraits, but here's one that actually looks like me. No, I think I think this has to have been a. I think this was a road shrink pen. Every now and then I write little poems. It says, "Don't sing to me, oh squeaky door, that sweet song of sadness. If I heard it never more, that would bring me gladness. Compose me now a silent ode of blissfulness and peace, as I slather on a load of lubricating grease." It's 
some crumbs or something in there. Must have been snacking and doodling at the same time. As you can see here, you can see some of the stitching, the strings in the middle here. Sometimes when I scan these in, I like uh, Photoshop the strings out. I can't remember what I did here. Sometimes you leave them in though, because it's, it's not the worst aesthetic ever. I like drawing diagrams. Sometimes they make more sense than others. Here we have the, the new super duper yacht built for eternal floating. Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking when I drew this, but maybe you have some insight now. Here, here we have a brief glimpse into a little bit of color. Usually if I do add color to my drawings, it's one or two colors. Here, some red with a little bit of white highlights. But usually it's just black and white. Actually, in this page, there's actually a little bit of gray. Does this count as color? I use some grayscale markers around the edge here to give it a little bit of a, uh, a shadow, a little bit of indentation. There's some words here in the background also. I was really getting into hatching here. You can see here in this one and this one really enjoying hatching. Very fine lines. Dots. Okay, really just going nuts with the hatching. I really, if you want to get good at hatching, you really just got to spend time doing it. And you don't got to do it in your sketchbook like this, but do this sort of thing where you just get a piece of paper and just fill, just absentmindedly fill a piece of paper with hatching where you practice creating different textures and tones, dark areas and light areas. And it doesn't have to be this sort of thing exactly, but just, just like low, low importance hatching, nothing too crazy. This one is inspired by diagrams I used to look at of like, like geological, you know, like showing like the different parts of like the water table and the earth, like topsoil, you know, and then like loam or whatever, you know, and then the bedrock and, you know, volcanic whatever's. This is based off of a picture. No, this is a, I think I went to the Met in New York and there might have been a, wait, was it at the Met? I saw some statue somewhere. I think his name was Ugolini or something. This guy was, uh, it's part of a statue of this guy was actually looking up at his dad, I think. Maybe someone knows what I'm talking about. Pretty happy with how that one came out. People are difficult. Like his lip looks weird, but I'm telling you, that's how his lip actually looked. Sometimes life, you know, reality is stranger than fiction. But maybe I should have adapted it, you know, so I don't know. Let me read this poem first before I address this page. There on the counter, plugged into the wall, senseless destruction would often befall freshly cut portions of flavorful bread, too young to be pared and sandwichly wed, or soft to be slathered with thick, fruity spread. Oh, deep down we knew that they never fled, so glued to our seats we looked on in dread, and secretly hoped to never recall what that flaming fixture and fiery gall brazenly did there in front of us all. So this page here, I don't know if you can tell, it depends how the light shines on it, but there, were actually, there was actually something else drawn here in the background, a partial drawing that I never completed, and I got far, far back in the rest of the drawing, in the rest of the notebook, before I, well... I, I gave up a little bit and colored over it with a, some other huge, like some huge graffiti, I think this marker. This is, look, at, look how big this marker is. That's a B-I-G marker. I used that on it. It's a big one, okay. Okay, so I used that on it. And then I used a white marker and just drew this here. And then I was done with it because it had just been like loitering and nagging in the back of my mind. For a long time I thought I can come back to it, something will hit me, some some version, you know, some type of inspiration, it'll come to me. But eventually I was like, so maybe not. It's been a long time, it's been like a year. This page has been sitting here half done, so I just then drew this here. It's okay. It's not you're not a failure because of that.
I don't have things to say about every page. Yeah, these are definitely this. I'm pretty sure this was this, this uh, 0.25 roach ring. That's one of the finer tips I use. I don't know if you can tell the difference between this and this. These are, this is the 0.35 on this page. And this is the 0.25 on this page, I'm pretty sure. Unless I hadn't even gotten into the isographs yet. I mean, this was like a year or two ago. I'm, s I'm starting to doubt my own memory, you know? I'm bad at thinking into the past. So I was really inspired by, um, you know, you can find weird bubbly textures in rocks sometimes. So I was inspired by actual bubbles and bubbly textures in rocks here, I think. And splashes. Like frozen, like very quick frozen pictures of, of foam and bubbles. And here I was inspired by a, a giraffe skull and skeleton and head. This page uh, also went unfinished, just like this face here was partially drawn for maybe also maybe a year until I came back to it and completed it. Drew like the rest of this stuff all around it and everything. Initially, I was imagining making this been a full two-piece thing, but by the time I came back to it a year later, like sometimes you know, because I had drawn all this, but sometimes you come back to it a year later, you're just not feeling the vibe and the flow of it anymore. So I couldn't, I couldn't come back to it and pick that right up. So I had to do something else. And so this page also was done out of order, like a year later because I had been leaving it blank. These, yeah, these lines I used a 0 0.7 for, so that's the largest tip I usually use. Excuse me. This is looking a little bit cookie monstery, huh? Got some suspicious little indecipherable characters down here. I like those. And I like what I did here with like a little outline here with like less detail. That's like, I like that little contrast. I need to, I like seeing, looking back at my own work and then identifying little pieces, little things I did that I liked and then working on incorporating those into other drawings. Cause I often, what happens more often is I see things I don't like that I did and I just get caught up on those, but it's good to internalize the things you do like also, which I'm sure I do, but it's, you know, it's easy to get hung up on the bad things. Like this one, it looks great, right? But I personally remember drawing it line for line and I know I can point to specific places in this where I messed up and the lines don't look so crisp and perfect. But when you just look at it all at once, you know, when you're not the one drawing each line, one line at a time, it looks pretty good. It's pretty fun and satisfying to look at, I think. I'll show you. See, pretty much like this, this whole thing, this whole area right here annoys me a lot. It's pretty, it's just sloppy. It's just sloppy. None of these circles and little bumps, as I call them, are even. And this whole, it's just, it doesn't look good to me. You know, as, co as compared Compared with, you know, like a lot of the other little circles and bumps and little paisley mandala -y bits in this, that one is just, it's not up to snuff. That's all I'm saying. A little bit more color here. This is colored pencil. And uh, this one is a little bit sloppy, a little bit rough. I did this one, I think, with a fountain pen. I think the Kawiko Sport. Which is uh, right here. So I used this pen for this one. Quico Sport. Except for maybe these black areas, I used a marker, like a Copic sketch. And I think I did this on a, on a, while riding in a car on a road trip, which is why it looks a little rougher, maybe. 
that's okay. I try not to do too many of these in the car because it's just sloppy and I want it to look a little bit tighter, a little crisper. More crisp, maybe? This one I drew while sitting in a coffee shop and a bar in Jackson, Wyoming, while all my friends went skiing. Because I didn't feel like... Because I don't like skiing. I'd rather sit and draw. And I think I made the right choice. I mean, look at this. Obviously, some of these come out of my imagination. And I don't know if you recognize some of these from, like, the Civil War. This guy had, the, had sideburns named after him. A few more faces over here. This one was also drawn with the .7. Oh, I like this one. Um, mostly because I finally, something, something I find it difficult to get through my head is the how useful big deep areas of blackness can be in making the rest of the image pop out at you, you know? Because that, ha if you notice, I mean it happens sometimes because I'm starting to get through my head, but usually I have big areas of white and I need more of this sometimes, I think. I mean, there's not ever like one thing that fixes every solution. Drawings don't have solutions, I don't think, but it, it, it looks really cool, I think. I like it. I like it a lot. This one is a little bit special because I used a, I think I used a glass, a glass pen to draw this one. Um, oh. Here's what glass pens look like, if you haven't seen them. A lot of these were made by this guy. Here's his logo, firespider.glass. That's his website, firespider.glass. Um, so these are, these are pretty cool pens, as you can see. They're just, they're just crazy. I think I used, I'm not sure which one of these I used. Like, these things glow in the dark. Not in the dark, but uh, under a black light. And speaking of a black light, um, these, a lot of these, uh, little bubbles I drew in here and there's some lines in here that glow under a black light but I don't, I don't have a black light set up right now and the, the the down the downside here is that this paper itself glows a little bit under the black light so uh, they don't pop that much it's it's a it's a subtle thing which is okay usually when I do black light drawings I sh I get my black light flashlight and draw it you know shine it all over the different papers I have on my shelf to see which ones don't react at all. That way when I put the black light, you know, the black light reactive ink on it, I know it'll pop like crazy. This is a mixture of my pens, um, but I think I added the pen work afterwards, only after using a bunch of the, the grayscale Copic markers. Just, just experimenting with different things. Pretty happy with this one. Every now and then I just see one of my own drawings like this, and well, is it bad to say that I inspire myself? I really do. Because I feel like this doesn't look a whole lot like any other artist's work I've, I, I've seen, so I'm like, maybe I've actually done a little bit of my own thing here. Maybe I've branched out on my own a little bit, I don't know. Because there, I feel like there are certain times when I, like, I've drawn something and it's like, okay, maybe that, that looks a little bit, you know, that's, that's exactly Mobius. Like, I can see how heavily I was influenced by Mobius there or, you know, or R. Crumb or something. I don't know. But sometimes I feel like I do make a little bit of my own art and it feels good and it excites me a little bit. Obviously, another self-portrait here. Really, all my drawings are self, that's what I say. All my drawings are self-portraits. Some of them look a little bit more, more like it than others. I don't know. Here's a drawing I did for my reading of The Color Out of Space by H.P. H. P. Lovecraft on YouTube. Have you guys heard of YouTube? Have you guys ever watched that one YouTuber that says, Hello, tubes. Plays the piano. Another little face here. 
quick one. Sometimes they're a little quicker and sketchier. I have a few different drawing styles that are a little quicker, sketchier, looser. You know, feels a little more liberating in the looseness and sketchiness. Um, but sometimes, you know, I get a little more careful and, and just like lose myself in being how careful and, and neat I am with the lines. And that's also liberating in an entirely different way. I think this one was also um, a glass pen. In fact, I'm not sure if this one was a glass pen. No, I'm pretty sure it was a glass pen. It was either a glass pen or a fountain pen. No, I think it was a glass pen. Yeah, this one's, this one's definitely a glass pen, though, because it drew nice, big, fat lines. Oh, yeah. Some good intestinal stuff going on here. There's some contraption and some other contraption. The Douglas McDougal Long Range Defense Agitator Mark V. And, uh, I mean, I did a YouTube video explaining all this. Some of you may have seen it. Targeting computer, recycling bin, skate pods, heartfelt thanks, backup tapes, armor plating, presidential suite, aft port, starboard bow, internal wiring, hydraulic, spiral staircase. You can read. I don't know why I'm reading it to you. You can probably read. Still We still sell those, I think, by the way. As you can see, I kind of like doing these false borders around them, you know, and like kind of different levels and layers, like there'll be like an inner one and then an outer one, and even these like don't, they don't even like line up completely. I enjoy those. I don't know if you can see here, there's a little bit of smudging here. The, that's one downside of um, just like whenever you put a lot of like dark ink right here. I don't know if I didn't let it dry long enough, but a little bit of it came off from here and smudged on over here when I closed the book. Maybe I just didn't let it dry long enough, I'm not sure. Yeah, I like these full page ones. I used to not be able to do the full page ones in my old sketchbook because I'd be, I knew that I, I couldn't get the middle here, this middle crease, which used to be a crack in my other one just because it would go deep down into the book and the scanner couldn't get it. But now with this, this type of binding, you can. Some sort of something, some sort of someone, sort of ruler maybe, I don't know. Hard to say. You tell me what you think it is. These are all open to interpretation. That's what I like about them. It's like seeing things in the clouds. Everyone's like, I see a duck. And the other person's like, I see a hippopotamus riding a duck. Here's a big one with the... Uh, with a very fine tip pen, so a lot of like details and stuff. Took a while. Some sort of spaceship rocketing out through everything. I don't know. I like this one. Hmm. Sometimes I see pictures that I've forgotten I've drawn, and then I see them. I'm like, whoa, that's cool. Good job, Peter. <laughs> It's good to support yourself. Oh, I like this one. I really like this area with these lines I drew and and then like the swimmy details here and all that all this and then like this thing. Oh, I like that one a lot. It's got some more cryptic characters. If I would improve anything on this one, I would have worked on this background area some more. This is the last part I did, and I think I was feeling a little bit of you know, the artistic version of, of uh, K. 
cabin fever, you know? I just, I wanted to move on to the next drawing, but maybe I should have just move on to the next drawing and then come back to this and finish that off with something I would have liked a little more. I think it would have looked good to have like a circle of some sort there, maybe a mandala -y sort of thing kind of radiating out. I mean, it doesn't look awful, but looking back at it now, I, I can see that I rushed it. Just because I was, I was getting some sort of art, art ache, you know, from spending too long on this. Another diagram. I like these. It's kind of like a wood, kind of a, inspired by both wood textures and muscle. And you know, like how muscle, like the ten, uh, not tendons, but the sinews and stuff. And I think this part was inspired by the insides of, of accordions, how accordions look on the inside. Also, I think I started drawing this when I was in Jackson also, because I went back. This was an empty page, this other one I drew in Jackson that I talked about. I think so. Maybe I think these were inspired by the Grand Tetons. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I, I think so, anyways. Yeah. I like the all my lines I've got shooting out of here, some sort of momentum or action going on there. I think that's good. This is inspired uh, by, by both rocks and like driftwood, stuff like that, just like the textures and, and how gnarled it is, you know what I mean? So we're working with like flow and it's just general swoopiness with this one. Very fine tip pen here. And then digging in, like you can see I was working on making like dark little sections there. So it looked like some of the drawing was like, just giving it a little bit of body. Just still working on that. See, that's something I've been trying to do for a long time is making my drawings feel less flat. I want to make it feel like you could fall into it or reach around it, hold it, grab it, stick your fingers in it or be sucked into it. I don't know. What, something like that. So, still. Hmm. Yep. Some sort of big windmilly sort of thing. I think I had a story on YouTube that went along with this one. I told us told a story. I don't remember exactly what it was. Hmm. Got some stippling here. So it's just this is all just dots. I think you can tell in the video probably, right? And then some other sort of mechanism, some giant <laughs> sewing machine or something. I'm not sure. I like, I like feeling the pages, because you can kind of feel the texture of the ink on there. There's little bumps and ridges. I don't know if it's good for the pages as far as their longevity, you know, getting more finger, finger oils on there, but I, I mean, my hands have been all over these pages anyways, so, I mean, it couldn't hurt that much more, right? They're not smearing. I mean, they maybe are a tiny bit. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's probably not good to touch. Whenever I ever let, whenever I hand this over, I do, I. You know, if I see people in person, my friends, you know, I do let them look through it, but I, I tell them, you know, only touch the edges. Just because you don't, you don't know. 
when I touch this. I know my fingers are clean, except for this huge smudge of ink I just got. But um, you just don't know, you don't know what people have on their hands. Even if they say their hands are clean, you don't know. And then here's the last page. It's pretty simple. Uh, it's the last page is a little bit frustrating sometimes and stressful. I even started this page before I did the second last page just because I knew it would weigh heavy on my artistic heart, you know? The last page in a big sketchbook you've been working on for two years. Um, and so eventually when I was finishing up and I was like, you know, I can't think of it as the last page. It's just, it's not the last page. It's just the, well, I mean, it's the last page in this sketchbook, but it's not like it's the last page I'm ever going to draw. It's just a page that happens to be located a, a, it's a drawing that happens to be located at the back end of this sketchbook. So it's no big deal, right? Because it's easy to psych yourself out, both with the last page and the first page of a sketchbook. So you just got to start, you just got to draw something, and then keep moving forward. Go on to the next drawing, draw something else, draw anything. The good, the main thing is that you are drawing, okay? We're so good at talking ourselves out of it because we don't have the right pens or we don't have, we don't know what to draw. We're not inspired. You can draw without being inspired. You can draw without being, without having the right pens, the right paper, or the right, you know, setup or too loud or too quiet. You don't have the right music. There's so many reasons not to draw, but there's so many more reasons to draw. Just because you should, you can, or you want to. It's good to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore, but thanks for watching this video. It's great. Um, also, I do have some little books like these, which I call line almanacs. I don't know why I started calling them that. I have like three of them right now, I think. I do one every like year or so, but basically they just have, um, like you can see, like a bunch of these drawings in them that you just saw. So if you're interested in having any of this art in your own hands, these are not like, I wouldn't say they are coffee table quality books, but they also have a lot of my my writing in them, which if you know, in, in that sort of thing, I'm pretty happy with my writing. It's, could, you could like it. Um, so check them out. They have, they have stuff in them if, you're, if you want it to look at. And it, these support me immensely also. I get like, I get like $7 every time you buy one of these, which is great. So anyways, thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day. You're all beautiful. And uh, here's to the next, here's to the next sketchbook. Okay, bye.